Go to 1 Samuel chapter 17. I'm going to read something in 3 John chapter 1 verse 2. It says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Now, I'm here to declare the will of God for your life is that you will prosper in everything. Not in some things, not in a few things, but in everything you will prosper. The Bible says whatever you touch shall prosper. It is the desire of God that you are the head and not the tail. That you're always above and not beneath. It's the desire of God that you and your household is well satisfied. That you have more than enough. That you prosper in everything in your spiritual life. Physical, social, mental, and financial. Nowhere in the word of God does it talk about poverty being a good thing. Poverty is a curse. Poverty is a curse. So if, it, if it's not talked about something, if it's not talked in the word of God that it's something good for, its, for the people of God, you shouldn't accept it yourself. And I want to introduce to you this spirit that's been holding families in poverty for way too long. We live in South Texas. The statistics say that this area is the most impoverished area in the entire United States of America. More people are so poor here in this area than anywhere else in the entire United States. And you might, they, you know, politicians will come up with so many reasons of why, and every family will come up with so many reasons why they are still in poverty. But I want to tell you, it doesn't matter if you're Mexican. It doesn't matter if you're white, black, green, purple. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter where you came from. The only thing that matters is where you're going. Jesus became a curse so that you can be free. So let's not excuse our situation as this is just the way it is. It's time for us to go to war. Amen. It's time for us to fight back using the, the power that God gives us. And I want to read to you about Goliath because Goliath was an oppressor. He was someone that brought so much fear to the land and he put so much, so much hurt upon the land that people were, would hide and they quiver with fear. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, we're going to read from verse 1 through 11. It says, now the Philistines gathered their armies together to battle and were gathered at Sochah, which belongs to Judah. They camped between Sochah and Azekah in Ephes Demon. And Saul, the men of Israel, Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together, and they encamped in the valley of Elah, and drew up in battle array against the Philistines. The Philistines stood on a mountain on one side, and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side, with a valley between them. And a champion went out from the camp of the Philistines named, named Goliath from Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. He had a bronze helmet on his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail, and the weight of his coat was 5,000 shekels of bronze. And he had bronze armor on his legs and bronze javelin between his shoulders. Now the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and his iron spearhead weighed 600 shekels. And a shield bearer went before him. Then he stood and cried out to the armies of Israel and said to them, why have you come out to line up for battle? You, the servants of Saul, choose a man for yourselves and let him come down to me. If he is able to fight with me and kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall be our servants and serve us. And the Philistines said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. When Saul and all Israel heard these words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Now here Goliath was a giant of a man, 
the greatest warrior, he stood before the army and he would defy the armies of God. He defied the people of God. He cursed God every day. And they would see how great and how big and how mighty he looked. And the army of Israel was all, every one of them were in such a big fear. Not one man would rise up and say, God will give me the victory. But everyone hid from the giant that was before them. Here comes David carrying lunch for his brothers. And he sees this giant and he hears the words from this giant. And the spirit of God starts stirring up on the inside of him. How dare he talk about my God like that? How dare he say things that are that negative? Who does this guy think? He's flesh and blood and he's trying to say things against my God? Was it no one wants to rise up to the fight? I'll rise up to the fight. And he got so brave and so bold. You see, it's one thing to say something, but it's another thing for people to believe the words that you say. A lot of people have a talk. Amen. And everybody thinks that, you know, oh, you're just crazy. You're just showing off. But not David. When he spoke it out, that everybody, everybody, oh, him. He was a young guy. There was nothing about him that said, oh, this guy, he could fight this monster of a man. He was a young man. He wasn't known to be the greatest warrior. He wasn't even in the army. But he was so captivated by God to come against this oppression that he stood up and he said, I'll do it. Amen. I believe there's some Davids that are going to rise up in this place today. Amen. Verse 40 says, then he took his staff in his hand and he chose for himself five smooth stones from the brook and put them in the shepherd's bag in a pouch, which he had. And his sling was in his hand and he drew near to the Philistine. So the Philistine came and began drawing near to David and the man who bore the shield went before him. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was only a youth, ruddy and good-looking. So the Philistine said to David, Am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. Then, then David said to the Philistine, you come to me with a sword, with a spear, and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day, the Lord will deliver you into my hands, and I will strike you and take your head from you. And this day, I will give the, carcass, uh, uh, the carcasses of the camp of the Philistines to the birds of the air and the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Hallelujah. Verse 47, then all the assembly shall know that the Lord does not save with sword and spear. For the battle is the Lord's and he will give you into my hands. So it was when the Philistine arose and came and drew near to David that David hurried and ran towards the army to meet the Philistine. Then David put his hand in his bag, took out a stone, and he slung it and struck the Philistine in his forehead so that the stone sank into his forehead and he fell on his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone and struck the Philistine and killed him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. Therefore, David ran and stood over the Philistine, took his sword, drew it out of its sheath, and killed him and cut off his head with it. And when the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they fled. Hallelujah. We got a lot to talk about. Amen. Praise God. God is so good. When we think things are impossible, 
they are impossible to the things we might see, but when we have God, there's nothing impossible. Amen? And I, I share this word with you because I have to minister to myself. About eight years ago, I became senior pastor of this church. And we stepped into a situation that was very, very unique. My father... God used them so mightily to preach the gospel all over the world. We're broadcasting on television. And the church was growing. growing. And how many of you know that you can only use the strength that God gives you? And so there was a lot of people. And when they, actually, when they came in, you know, when God put the vision in my father's heart to preach the gospel on television to the nations, my dad went to the Lord and said, Lord, how are we going to pay for this? You understand, my dad didn't come from, from a, a, a church. He didn't grow up in the church. He got saved because his mama was the first one who got saved. She got saved in, in, in New York City, and she would walk every night to church in the middle of the night and walk by herself, a, this, you know, just an old lady. My dad would, would, would see her and say, Mom, what are you doing? Aren't you, you're crazy walking the streets of Brooklyn this late at night. Don't you know someone's going to mug you? And my grandma would look at him and say, Carlitos, if you only saw one muscle on the arm of my angel, you'll never say that again. Later on, my, my dad met God on the side of the road, gave his heart to the Lord. And then the Lord put a word inside his mouth. And then the Lord gave him a vision to preach the gospel to every nation. And he became, he started on that path. He started on that journey. He had a vision for what God had for him. And he went to the Lord and he said, Lord, how are we going to pay for this? It's going to take a lot of money to preach the gospel to the nations. My dad wasn't a wealthy man. He was a poor man. The gospel made him rich. It wasn't that he always had a lot. It was that he had, he knew how to get his prayers answered. Amen. And so he went to God and said, how are we going to do this? You know, I don't have a lot of money. And God said, I'm, seven, I'm sending you seven millionaires. Now you tell a pastor seven millionaires are coming to your church to pay for the gospel. You make a pastor happy. But what he didn't tell them is that every one of them were going to be bankrupt and broke and have nothing when they came. And what happened is these men and these women started coming and the word of God started coming alive inside of them and they grabbed a hold of it and they started rising up in the blessings of the Lord because they grabbed a hold of the vision of sending the gospel to the nations. They would wake up to do whatever business or whatever, whatever work that God blessed them with, but they woke up not because they were trying to make wealth for themselves. They were making wealth for the kingdom of God. It became their ministry. And whatever they touched prospered. Amen. After my father passed away, I heard one person tell me that you know that 10 churches split from this church? Now, I can understand some churches that might have one or two splits, but we had 10 all at once. We went down from averaging thousands of people coming every Sunday morning to just a handful. And we kept on preaching the gospel to the fullness of our strength. And, and because... You know, when we had a need, there was people that, that surrounded us and started giving advice saying, you know what, you guys, you guys are really blessed. You know, we, we could start helping you. We know you guys got this need, this desire to preach the gospel. You know, just sign this piece of paper. We'll, we'll help you with these, these, these loans and these notes. And, you know, you're, 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 you're good. And the church became in debt. When I became pastor of the church eight years ago, we had this great debt and no way to pay it. My mother looked at me and she said, you're receiving the ministry in worse hands than, than we began it. And I looked at my mother and said, just put it in the anointing's hands and the anointing will take care of it. I didn't have an answer, but I had the answer. Amen. I went to God that day. I got, I got anointed on, Mon on Sunday. Monday morning, I went into my office and spent time with the Lord. I said, God, this is not my church. It's yours. If you want to shut it down, shut it down. I refuse to pay for it. I couldn't pay for it if I wanted to pay for it. I couldn't even take care of one day of paying for it. <laughs> I said, God, you made me pastor. I'll get ready to preach the gospel on, on Sunday morning. 
but I expect you to take care of the rest. And by the end of the week, the Lord provided for, he actually paid for a, a whole year of broadcasting television and, and the, the needs of the ministry. He paid for it in one day. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And he told me just to love his people, and that's what we've been doing, and we're never going to stop. Amen? And the only reason we are here today and we are where we are at is because we've been willing, been obedient, and we've been trusting God. And every day, God has taken care of. Amen? Thank God for his faithfulness. Amen? He's good. He's a good God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But see, even though, you know, we have seen so many incredible things, we never stop uh, doing things for the Lord because of, you know, we have needs or whatever. We just trusted God every step of the way. But for eight years, we've been carrying this debt. And I look at that debt, and it seems like I can't move it. Seems like I can't get rid of it. For eight years, it's been, it's been, it's been upon. And I can't say it's upon me. I say it's upon all of us. Because this is not my church. This belongs to you. This belongs to God. Amen. Amen. And so for eight years, we, 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 we've had this weight. And even though it's never stopped us from doing what God calls us to do, we'll do whatever God tells us to do. We'll say whatever God tells us to say. We could care less about the consequences. All we want to do is faithful and obedient to God. Whether we're in a ministry that's beautiful and as blessed as this one, or we're out in the street on the corner on the box, I could care less. Because my only desire is to follow God. To go where he tells me to go. To do what he tells me to do. Amen. If I wanted money, I would have started a business somewhere and done something in business. Praise the Lord. But that doesn't bring me joy. Lead someone to Jesus. That brings me joy. Amen. Praise the Lord. And I, you know, I talk about me personally because I, I, you know, I see this every month, the needs. But this is just a little or bigger picture of what every one goes through across this world. Every one of you, or most of you. Have, dealing, have been dealing with issues of not enough, issues of lack, issues of debt, issues of too many credit card bills, issues of people calling all the time, asking you for things that you don't have the strength to give it. Future expenses that you don't know how you're going to take care of it. And it's like every day there's a Goliath that stands up in your own personal life and screams out, where are you? Are you willing to fight? You can't do it. You'll never accomplish your goals. You'll never see your dreams. You'll never become what you want to be. And that Goliath will say and look at you and say, how dare you think that you will ever live in that way? How dare you think you'll ever be free from, this, from, from my chains of poverty and debt? See, I want to tell you, I could care less of stuff. I told you, I only got two things I do. I, I wake up and I preach the gospel and do what God tells me to do. And then I go play video games. It don't take too much money to do that. Amen. You know, I, I don't have a dream of, you know, or desire to wear like very fancy clothes. I, I'm, I'm good with $15 jeans. They all cover your hiney. That's all that matters. Amen. Praise God. Now, it, it's not bad having, you know, expensive clothes. It's good. If you, if you got expensive clothes, clothes, praise God. But that's not a temptation for me. Any expensive clothes I got is because my wife bought it for me. She got rich tastes. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. And every time she brings me clothes, I think, I could have bought two pair of pants with that. But it's not, it's not bad. It's good. It's good you drive the cars that you want to drive. You have, live the house you want to live. You, riches are not a curse. 
Poverty is a curse. Amen? It's not about what you live in and what you drive in. It's how you got there and what you're doing with what you got. Amen? And I want to introduce to you, to you this spirit that's controlling the entire world. It's called the mammon spirit. The mammon spirit. Jesus said you cannot serve God and mammon. And this mammon spirit will always be trying to oppress the people. It takes the poor and makes them into slaves. I drive down the street and I see all these, these uh, game places, these, these adult game places, you know, all down this highway, you see them and they're packed with so many people, but every one of them are poor. Every one of them don't have nothing. And the only time they go there is when they get a little something so that they could give it to the mammon spirit. The mammon spirit says, why don't you just give me a little bit so I could give you this. It doesn't tell you that what you give in it, what it gives to you is to put you into slavery. The mammon spirit is a slave master. It's the spirit of credit card debt. It's the spirit of loans. It's a spirit of, of, I'll give you something today, but I'll take your tomorrow. Not just your tomorrow, but your family's tomorrow as well. Now, don't get high-minded on me right now. I'm humbling myself, and I've been open to you. I'm telling you everything that I could tell you. You might be doing really well. You might be very blessed. And you might not have these issues that I'm talking about of having a lot of debt burden upon your life. But humble yourself right now. Don't be too good that you can't hear the gospel. Check yourself right now. Whether you're watching me on television or you're here in this room right now. Check yourself. Humble yourself so you don't miss out on the word of God for your life. Amen. Amen. I thank God you're blessed. I thank God that you might have learned these things. But someone had to lead you this way. Amen. And there is a purpose that you need to hear it today. So this mammon spirit, it, it, it comes and it, it, it tries to, to attach itself upon your life. And it's like a seed. It gets inside and it goes from generation to generation to generation. Every person that goes out to these video game places or goes, does, does uh, gambling or is chasing after false riches and get rich quick schemes, they, not only do they do it themselves, but they try to get all their friends to get into it too. As they pass one curse to another. So many times, you know, you turn on the TV set and the mammon spirit is speaking to you. It starts off this way. Shows you a nice car and a guy driving really nice, slender, handsome, like Pastor Kevin, praise the Lord. Why y'all laugh? And he's driving in it and he's not angry, he's not frustrated, he's not tired. There's no coffee on the, on the steering wheel, there's no, there's no dirt on the, no, it's just the most perfect image. Wearing a nice suit, nice tie, prestige. And, he's, and they, they tell you, you deserve this. And you, you, you see it and you're thinking, yes, I do. You deserve to live here. You deserve to wear this. They show you those nice shoes. I know I'm hurting some people right now. Those nice shoes, they got those big old, those, those big old pictures at the, at the store, and you see the little shoes there, and the, you deserve this. And you're thinking, man, I do, but I don't got enough. Oh, don't worry. We got a credit card for you. Matter of fact, we'll give you an extra 20% off. Just sign your name. Or let's say better, just sign your future. Say that, just sign your future. Oh, some of y'all didn't say it. Those are, you, those are the ones that really need to say it. Okay. <laughs> just sign your future. Let, let me hear you over here. 
Make sure the camera's on them. I want to see later on. Ready? One, two, three. Just sign your future. All right. And next thing you know, you got these little chains upon you, little by little, little by little, little by little. And because you signed your future away, now that mammon spirit has now become your God. You don't work to serve the Lord. You work to serve the mammon spirit. And you think, oh, well, no, pastor, I serve God. Well, don't pay the mammon spirit. Watch how quickly it comes after you. It chases after you. It runs you down. It calls you. It hunts you. Shows up at your workplace. You got caller ID. you thinking... I ain't going to answer that. <laughs> and every now and then you make a mistake and answer it. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, oh, uh, no, no, I got, I got, no, the che- yeah, the, it's in the mail. Oh, uh, I don't remember the number. And now you become a liar. And it puts a pressure. And then, and then next thing you know, you're angry at your wife or you're angry at your husband. You know, why did you have to buy that taco back in 2004? (laughs) We're paying 22% interest on that taco. (laughs) And and we live in a fake world. Because everything we own, we don't own it. It owns us. The Bible says, speak the truth in love. I love you. I'm saying this so that we can break out of it. I mean, even even your 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 fathers and your grandfathers and your friends. Oh yes, get married, sign your future, get a house. It's good to have a house. There should be a plan and a purpose. Shouldn't be oppression. Something you can afford and build, something you can leave to your family. But right now, because of the mammon spirit, everybody say mammon. Mammon. That mammon spirit, because of that mammon spirit, the only thing we're leaving to our family is debt. When you live your entire life and you owe more than what you got when you die, that don't sound like a blessing, that sounds like a curse. And I want to bring you out of it today because the truth will set us free. There's no reason why your kids have to live like that ever again. There's no reason why you have to live like that ever again. You could come out in Jesus' name. And I want to share these these steps. There's three simple steps that if you grab a hold of it today and begin to apply it to your life. See, it's steps because wherever you're at, there's a place that you want to go and it takes steps to get there. You have to journey there. So I'm going to give you steps so that you can head in the direction. Amen. And as you head in the direction, the Lord will rise up and he will be your be your help and your support. And you'll get there quick in Jesus name. Amen. See, this mammoth spirit didn't just start today. It happened in the garden. God told Adam and Eve, anything you desire, it's all yours. And God said, the only thing I ask of you, just one thing I ask you, don't eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The day that you eat of the tree is the day you will die. Think about everything was man except for one thing. And the enemy came in, the deceiver, the one that carried that mammon spirit. Cain said, look at the fruit. Looks beautiful. It tastes good. And the day you eat it, you'll be just like God. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. Exactly what happens when we see commercial ads. Exactly what happens when a salesperson comes to talk to us. Exactly what happens when we just go to places without any vision or purpose. It appeals to our lusts. They never show you broccoli and say, mm, broccoli's good. They show you that big old steak. 
I need to tell my wife. Let me tell my wife. Now we're talking about food. I'll be over here, so if she wants to hit me, she can hit me now. I won't get, uh, she got a rock. <laughs> we went to go eat this past week. We went to, to Johnny Carino's, right? And when we were there, you know, we hadn't eaten there in a, in a while, and we, we had our, our dinner, and, and I, I told my wife, I said, well, let's have dessert. And they got tiramisu. And my wife went, mmm. And I said, now we don't have to eat it. She goes, why not? I said, because whatever pleasure it brings to you, it's not going to be better than the pleasure that you just had just thinking about it. You already gave all your emotion to that. Mm. <laughs> she didn't even have to taste it, but it was just that very little desire that brought it out. That's what happens. Every, they're, they're peeling in your lust. You know, you deserve this. You need this. This is, this, you, you, you belong. And they, they just sign your future. That's all they want. And that's what happened in the Garden of Eden. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, temptation. Amen? Are you with me so far? Are you still awake or are you gone home? Amen. Don't, don't leave early. I got rocks. I used to play baseball. Amen. Praise God. So this deception happened in the Garden. And see, the, the, the thing about it uh, wasn't so that God was trying to keep man from experiencing these things. Or he didn't want them to have knowledge. The reason why God said don't eat of that tree, because the only thing man knew was the knowledge of good. They didn't know the knowledge of evil. God was protecting man from the knowledge of evil. So many people say, why did God allow bad things happen? God didn't allow bad things happen. Man said, I want to know what bad things feel like. God was protecting man, but man, because of its lust, stepped on over. Amen? You see the picture clearer now. And what really what happened was this. It removed God from being man's provider. Before that, anything man desired, God provided but man took his eyes off God and said, I'll provide it for myself. Every time we go into the land of debt to get something that we do not own, we are saying, I'm my own God. I don't need you to bless me. Did you hear that today? Oh, I, I don't have enough money in the bank and I don't have enough faith to believe God for it. So I'll just trust in my new God visa. My visa shall supply all my needs. And it only cost me 22.9% for the next 30 years. If you don't have the money for it, go to God. Go to God, Father, in the name of Jesus. You said that you will give me my heart's desires. I really want these shoes. And I ask you to provide it for me in Jesus' name. Jesus says, whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give it unto you. The scripture says this, seek ye first the kingdom, and all these things shall be added unto you. See, our desire, my desire for you is that you live on the additions of God. You might think that, that oh, well, God just wants, you know, I don't need too much. I just need, to, no, 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 no. God loves to bless you greater than your imagination. Amen. I remember a friend of mine, he, he, you know, he was a minister, great man of God. He, he had a desire for this, this vehicle. And we went test driving and he saw it and he's like, I like this. This is nice. And I knew the guy's income. I knew there's no way he could afford that. But we were just, you know, hanging out. So we went test driving. 
you know, I was, I was hosting him and, and all that and just having a good time. And he went to God and he said, Father, I ask you to provide for me a vehicle. He went off and preached at a couple other places. When he came back, he stopped into, he was in Boston at the time. He came back to Boston, and the pastor called him up. He said, come on over to my house. When he shows up, the pastor says, listen, God's been speaking to me. He told me that you desired a vehicle. My, my friend, he wanted a Tahoe. He goes, well, I was going to get you a Tahoe, but I knew that we could do better. So he gave him a, what do they, they call it? A, a, not, not a forerunner. It's a, just a better car than a Tahoe. <laughs> It was bought, paid for, in full, and give it to him as a gift from the Lord. Amen. Amen. Ah, oh, Pastor, God can't give cars. Yes, he can. He can. Or God can't give houses. Yes, he can. Not to you, because you can't believe. God will meet you at where your faith is. The bank says, so oh, just sign your future. You can have it. God says, ask, trust, believe, and wait. We get such a, well, I need it. I need it now. No. The blessing of the Lord adds no sorrow. You know, there's some people that are believing God for a house right now, and you're believing, you're trusting, and your, your miracle's just one moment away, but yet there's some banker calling you, trying to make some commission, moved by that man, that, that, that man in spirit saying, don't just sign on the dotted line. And next thing you know, you're, you're living in a house that you can't afford. And then you get angry at God. Why did you provide? God said, I was building it for you. You didn't wait. You didn't trust. Amen. Praise the Lord. See, David faced this Goliath. Not in the power of his strength, but in the power of God. You might think, well, pastor, I don't have everything that I need to see these debts go. It's not about what you don't have. It's about what you do have. All David had was a rock. You got a rock. You're more than equipped. Amen. See, David couldn't fight this battle in the flesh. You can't work long enough. There's not enough blessing out there that you've received to take care of the things of the past so we need the anointing of god upon our life to take care of it we need to break free in jesus name tell your neighbor we're breaking free in jesus name we're killing goliath in jesus name see see that's what that mammoth spirit it's so big it's such it's so big it stands up and it says oh no 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 you're not gonna do it you're not gonna live there you're not gonna be able to build a business you're not gonna be able to be blessed your family's gonna be poor you're from San Benito you're always gonna be poor everybody from San Benito is poor and it's telling you what you can't do but I'm here to tell you Jesus Christ died so that you can do he didn't stay in the grave, but he rose from the grave. And now the victory is yours too. So we're coming out in faith. Hallelujah. Say, I'm coming out in faith. You got to believe. You got to believe. You got to believe. Why? Why? Why is it so important that you don't have this debt no more? Because what debt does, it destroys time. Just this past week, there was a revival meeting just like the ones that we've been having. Teams going out in the street, leading people one-to-one -to, -one to Jesus. This one minister went up to this, this elderly person, 75 years old, led him to Jesus Christ. He said, and I receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior, and I'm on my way to heaven. And he died right then. Someone came to him one moment before he entered into eternity. He was at the gates of hell. And someone showed him, showed up. To unlock the gates of heaven for his life. 
at his very last breath. And I'm on my way to heaven. And he gave his life. What do you think we do here? We lead people to Jesus. Everything about us is about leading people to Jesus. We're multiplying the ministers and the, the preachers of the word of God, spirit-filled preachers that carry the good news of Jesus Christ. That's what we do here. Why? So that more people can go to heaven. And we're not just thinking about this church. We send the gospel to the nations. They're kids that are orphans that are eating today because we were able to buy them food and they got people there that are teaching them about Jesus and they're going to be the next preachers that are going to rise up and change their nation because of your sacrifices and the offerings that we send over there. We're sending the gospel to the nations in Africa, nations of Europe, the nations of Asia. You look at our bank account, it's empty. That's good for us. Because it don't matter if you have, we have a billion dollars. By the time we're done, it's going to be empty. Nobody could go, nobody dies with a U-Haul attached to themselves with all their stuff. When you die, your stuff stays here. The only thing that you could bring is souls to the kingdom of God. And I need you to be blessed beyond measure. I need your businesses to be blessed. I need your household to be blessed. I need you to have so much wealth because the kingdom of God needs your wealth. Amen. It's the anointing that rises you up and prospers you for purpose. Well, you think God wants to bless you so you, you can stop blessing him? You know, people crying out to God right now, saying, God, will you help me? And God says, I got a son. I can tell you people that I know personally that had nothing, and God rose them up. And they knew their plan and their purpose. And then they walked away from it just because of stuff. Instead of the stuff being because of the additions of God, they love God, they serve God, and God blessed them. Then they began to serve their stuff. They began to worship the man in spirit. They began to worship that Goliath. Oh, I can't. I got to take care of my boat. Let your boat sink. Just don't be on it there. <laughs> Sell it. Give it to the gospel. It's a greater investment. God will bless you with more than you can imagine. And it's good that you have stuff. Just make sure the stuff doesn't have you. Make sure God has your heart forever. Amen? Praise the Lord. And this mammon spirit has to die because there's too many people that need to get saved while we're alive. I see eternity. I don't know how long I'm going to be here. So I'm preaching as much as I can. If I'm not preaching, I'm teaching as much as I can. I'm laying down foundations so that when I leave this world, the word of God still keeps on being preached through this ministry. I want to be faithful with my time. I cannot afford to sacrifice tomorrow to Visa and MasterCard or whatever debt. Amen? It's a curse. And I'll tell you, this mammon spirit's rising up stronger than ever. The poor are becoming poorer. The rich are getting richer. And there's less support for the gospel. Because everybody's run to their own home and been crying out, woe is me. And Goliath's out the door saying, where is the man of God who will rise up? Nobody's here. I've won. Not in this church. Not in this ministry. You, Goliath, you show up, you're going to lose your head. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let me give you three, three steps. Write these things down. 
I want to tell you, but before we, we, we go into I want to let you know the Lord is your deliverer. Tell your neighbor, the Lord is my deliverer. Tell your other neighbor, the Lord is my deliverer. Shout it out to, to the ceiling, the Lord is my deliverer. See, see that deliver. See, that's what David said. When they, when 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 he he rose up and he said, you know, I'll fight Goliath. They looked down there thinking, who, who are you? David said, the Lord delivered me from the lion. The Lord delivered me from the bear. The Lord will deliver me from Goliath. Amen. The Lord is my our deliverer. Amen? Amen. Praise God. I want to give you three steps to kill Goliath and live forever. Live in freedom forever three steps to kill goliath and live in freedom forever number one repent and get angry repent and get angry go to god father forgive me for not trusting you for my needs and then get angry at every debt, every bill, every loan, get angry at the spirit of mammon.